How's everybody doing today? And as you can see, we're going to be doing a top prospects rebuild. So what if all the top prospects were put onto one team? How well would they progress? How well would they do in today's MLB? So if you guys enjoyed the video, hit the like button, subscribe if you are new and enjoy the content. And as always, in the comment section down below, let me know what you guys thought about this. What what if rebuild should we do next? You know, just, you know, let me know what you guys think. Also, if you missed today's video from earlier, we talked about what to expect um in the upcoming franchise series what kind of series do you guys want to see so go watch that video you guys are going to see the little banner come across my face right now click that little link it'll take you to that video there's also a a, a poll for you guys to vote on so you guys can get involved on the upcoming franchise series so basically what i did was i took this roster the us the roster we've been using for the past couple uh rebuilds not the roster that i'm waiting for but a roster that we have been using and then i just threw all the top prospects into this team i took the top 25 prospects um basically i kind of took one or two from each position and then for pitching i took like the top four top five and then i put them all on the orioles so where are the orioles so what we're gonna do is we're not gonna sign anybody we're not gonna um, we're not really going to focus on draft. We're just going to focus solely on this team. See who progresses really well. See who doesn't progress very well. Um, and get into it. Basically, we're going to do five seasons this time. So we give it a little bit more time for growth to happen. Um, so what I'm going to do is really quickly, I'm going to set the roster, make sure all the prospects are in the major leagues and we're going to get into it. I think this is going to be a good rebuild. Um, maybe we'll revisit this again. Once the real OSFM rosters that I'm looking for come out that way we can, you know, see how different the two rosters are. Um, but for right now, let me get this roster sorted. Alrighty. So the issue is a lot of the top 50 prospects for pitchers aren't relievers. Actually, none of them are not even like, you know, like top 10 in each right-handed and left-handed uh, prospects aren't relievers at all. There are none. So you guys can see we have to rock a full starting pitching rotation. So it's it's a little difficult. We're a little low on the pitching. Um, but this is what we're looking like. Uh, it's probably not going to work out too well. Mostly because I, I didn't really think about it. And I kind of went a little player heavy. But you guys can see the team here. So let's let's quickly go over the the, the rotation. Whitley, Gore, Morejon. Uh, Whitley's from the Astros. Gore's from the Padres. Morejon's from the Padres. Luzardo is from the Athletics. Uh, Mize is from the Tigers. Cease is from the White Sox. Soroka from the Braves. Puck from the Athletics. Sheffield from the Mariners. Keller is from... Oh, man. Mitch Keller, Mitch Keller, Mitch Keller. Ah... Uh, Pirates, Pirates, and then Michael Kopech from the Sox. Um, when you look at our lineup, you guys can see Kyle Tucker of the Astros, Tatis Jr. from the Padres, Guerrero Jr., Vlad Jr. from the Blue Jays, Pete Alonso from the Mets, Kirilov from the Twins, uh, Hyura from the Brewers, Senzel from the Reds, Robles from the Nationals, Mejia from the Padres, uh, Lau from the Rays. Yeah, the Rays. I think that's right. Yeah, Adele from the Angels, what, uh, Jimenez from the White Sox, Lewis from the Twins, Bart from the Giants, and Urias from the Padres. So we've got a lot of bench bats. We probably should have invested in probably a little bit more pitching, um, but we'll see how it goes. This obviously is a test. Um, everybody has B or higher potential. So what I did was I took the top four or top five, or I took the top four for each pitcher. And then for the lineup, I took I basically took the top two for each um and then the outfield i think i just because they group all outfielders i think i took the top five top six for outfield so that's kind of what i did so i just kind of went to the mlb top 100 prospects page and i just kind of picked the top two from each area so this is the team i'm kind of excited about it we're just gonna sim all the way through a season we're gonna do five seasons we'll recap every season see how it goes hopefully it goes well i'm kind of excited to see how it is see how players progress um, and get into it. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let's let's get into it. Let's see how it goes Alrighty, so first season it went worse for the Orioles. They lost three more games than they did the previous season um, So last season like last year in real life the Orioles won 47 games this time we won 44 So at the end of the season 44 and 118 um, we got an award probably uh, a, Oh a gold glove. Okay, um, but let's see how the team did um some high ERAs, obviously, but 
again we just want to see how they're progressing how they've gone up a little bit so Forrest Whitley's gone up too um, he had a pretty high ERA 578 Mackenzie Gore you know okay so this is kind of like a benchmark you know this is the first season how will things go um, from here obviously with prospects it's a little bit difficult to judge because normally you don't have them playing the very first season that you know you start a franchise unless you know they're a player that's already kind of been in the majors for a couple seasons you know they've had a few at bats um, and things like that so um, I'm thinking Soroka might have to come there but for here this is kind of like our benchmark can it only go up from here which we hope it will um, but we'll have to wait and see um, but and it, it sucks that we don't have a lot of bullpen arms we have to rely on starters so that kind of hurts us in um, the growth of those starting pitchers it also helps uh, hurts us in the the growth like just our team in general you know if you don't have bullpen arms your team's probably not going to do very well so you guys can see 250 for Kyle Tucker not too bad 244 for Tatis Jr. Um, Vlad hit 280 almost so he's probably going to be one of our better players for sure Pete Alonso didn't hit the ball very well in terms of having the average, but you know he's going up pretty quickly. Um, 209 for Hyura. His potential has actually gone down, um, and that's something to worry about as well. If you start using players too soon, sometimes their potential goes down. So that's obviously something we de we're going to have to keep an eye out. Um, because if that's the case, I'd rather have Urias play, or I'd rather have Senzel play. So um, maybe we do that, and we just kind of ease hyura into the lineup um that way we don't hurt his growth you know um but let's look at the rest of the bench joe adele is up to a 70. hyura like we've already looked at kind of went down this year royce lewis 67 he 34 at bats almost hit 300. joey bart backup catcher kyle tucker we already looked at which means we missed somebody eloy 76 overall okay and then Senzel is a 76 overall as well. So again, this is kind of like the benchmark season. See how things went. Um, the biggest question mark is going to be our pitching. Um, when you bring up prospect pitchers way too soon, it hurts their growth a lot. Um, and it hurts their potential a lot. A lot of the times it decreases. So we'll look at the standings. You guys can see we finished last, obviously. Um, and then the playoff bracket is there. Um, we'll take a guess. Let's say... Just because I haven't seen them before, let's go with the Diamondbacks. See if they can be a little bit of a, a sneaky team. Uh, the Cubs defeated the Indians in the 2019 World Series offseason time. I'm not going to show you anything in the offseason. We're going to bring back everybody, and we're going to get Season 2 started right away. Alrighty, so 54 and 108. So, a, a what, 10-game improvement on the previous season. Let's kind of see where we are. So, I decided to just focus on the end of the seasons. Pete Alonso won another gold glove. Um, just to see how, you know, how they change from season to season. You know, how much they're progressing season to season rather than just stop, start every season, stop, start every season, stop, start. So 54 wins, 108 losses. And let's check out the team as a whole. You guys can see some players are really growing pretty quickly. Urias is up to a 79. His potential has dropped a little bit, which is unfortunate. Senzel um, didn't hit the ball as well as previous seasons in terms of average or on-base percentage. But his slugging and OPS went up, and his overall has gone up. He's up to an 83. Vlad Jr. is an 85. Um, off the, like average and on base percentage, not as good, but we'll see. Hopefully, it goes a little bit better for him next time. Alrighty, Pete Alonso is up to an 85 as well. Um, average went up a little bit. His potential is going down, unfortunately. Alex Kirilov is um, going up, which is awesome to see. You know, he actually looks like a decent little pickup for an outfielder for the future. Tatis Jr. is an 80 overall. Um, it's looking like a lot of the players' averages went down, which is not good. Joe Adele's jumped up a lot, especially since the first season. At the beginning of the season, you know, he was under a 70. In two seasons, he's already up to a 78. Kyle Tucker really hasn't grown that much. Um, he doesn't look like too much of a an offensive threat, which is, uh, you know, a little unfortunate. Mejia just doesn't hit the ball well, which is unfortunate because he's, he's a good defensive catcher. But... Um, based on his stats but you guys can see just offensively not so much Hyura, you know he was on the bench this season it looked like he it helped out helped him out a little bit you know his hitting went up a little you know went up a little bit his average went up as well victor robles um got you know kind of put to the side a little bit his hitting stats aren't that good but his fielding and speed look really nice so he should continue to develop eloy 
just not hitting the ball well but you know he's still going up in a rate you know in rating royce lewis is going up as well you know in his limited plate appearances um but he did a lot better in his limited plate appearances this season than he did the year before and joey bart is uh looking pretty good offensively you know 22 hits three of them being homers not too bad not too bad um so everyone's at least a 74 which is good to see on the, the lineup side looking at pitching rotation you guys can see a lot of these guys aren't going to grow as much because they're not relievers and that's that's unfortunate because if if we had prospects that were relievers we'd be really good you know these guys that were relievers would be thriving like mitch keller he's a starting pitcher but he actually did really well in the closing pitching spot i don't know why it worked out but when you look at like these middle reliever guys they're not doing too well they're not growing too much and that's because you know they're getting you know they're only getting 30 innings a season you know 50 innings a season you know stuff like that where they're not getting that that time they would was as if they were a starting pitcher long relievers a little bit you know a little bit easier to grow as a long reliever because you are getting you know around 100 200 innings still but you know when you're a starter you're actually getting those innings that you need you're actually in the position that you're supposed to be in um so you guys can see Mackenzie Gore is an 82 Whitley is up to an 81 after two seasons Michael Kopech is at 81 as well Louis, uh, Jesus Luzardo's his potential has gone down which is not good to see and Michael Mike Soroka is there so you guys can see the team um pitching is obviously very difficult to judge in the bullpen um but you know long relief you can kind of tell you know okay they're they're growing slowly um starting rotation this is where you're really going to see the growth um and then the lineup is where you're really going to see the growth so for me it's really exciting to see these young players grow pitching you know it's like i said it's difficult to see so that's going to be the last time i mentioned the pitching um i might skip a couple seasons and just jump but we'll see i'm not too sure but looking at the playoff picture nah screw it we'll go every season so you guys can see the team here, the teams for the playoff bracket. We're going to go with, uh, I'm going to pick the Rays. I'm going with underdogs every single season just to see what happens. Pirates defeated the Indians. I mm, I wanted to pick the Pirates. I, man, that's, <laughs> that's a bummer. Oh, I did want to mention first baseman, Nathan Lau. Just, he got cut because we had to bring in, an, we had that, we had an extra pitcher that we needed. Um, so that's why um, he was he was our 26th man and he got sent down to the minors and um, he, he just slowly started to crumble unfortunately so let's get into season three catch you guys at the end of that one alrighty so a huge improvement 74 and 88 season three went a lot better let's go check the standing see where we finished uh, we finished we still finished fourth um, 21 games out the wild card nine and a half um, so, you know, we're making improvements for sure. Pete Alonso, third straight gold glove. Luis Urias won as well. When you look at the team now, what what happened? Where, where, are, where are some of our players here? Justice Sheffield got sent down to AAA, which I don't understand. Uh, where did... Who got sent down? Or did someone just get brought up? Oh, Kirilov got sent down. That's not good. So we'll take a look at him. Um, why are th I don't know why the CPU is changing things on me now. So Victor Robles is up to a 79. Um, okay. All right. So slowly, but surely it's those hitting stats that are holding him back. Eloy's an 82. He hit 300 this season. Um, and the most at bats he's had in his career. So slowly, but surely he might be jumping into the starting lineup. Actually, he probably should. Um, Royce Lu oops, 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 oops. Royce Lewis, 76. You know, he's slowly creeping up to Mejia. Um, not the best offensive year, but it looks like he was the backup this season for Joey Bart. And then Richie Martin, I'm not going to look at because he's not a prospect. Luis Urias, best offensive season in terms of average um, on base percentage and OPS. And so he's going up. Um, Eloy Jimenez, we've already looked at. Vlad is an 85, so he didn't go up too much. Um, his stats have slowly gone down, which is unfortunate in terms of average and on base percentage. Pete Alonso looks like a monster. He's hit 30 home runs. He's over 30 home runs every single season. He looks like a player that is a definite pickup. Same with Nick Senzel. He's only getting better. 86 overall. Um, Tatis Jr., 83. Um, his best offensive season for sure. Joe Adele, 
253 on the year. His potential is going down, but it was his best year in terms of offense as well. Kyle Kyle Tucker. Okay. This is that's his best season, which is good. You know, I want to see that. I want to see him go up. And then Joey Bart is an 80, so he's definitely going to be con competing with um, Mejia for a starting spot at the catching role. So there's that. Let's look at the pitching. It looks like they brought up somebody. Um, it didn't. It doesn't look like he pitched that much though. So that's that's good. So Forrest Whitley look is this is the best he's pitched, which is awesome. Each year he's gotten better and better. He's up to an 84 overall. Whew. 97 velocity same with Kopech. um this was his best season too so okay mackenzie gore eh you know eh you know can't complain about it casey mize there we go those are some good numbers a 3-2 era 3-5 okay we're getting we're getting some three eras now which is good to see soroka's up to an 83 um mitch keller as a closer didn't do as well this season but for a starting pitcher that's a closer, I'm not going to complain about that. He's doing pretty solid there. Puck is a 72. Um, I just kind of want to show you guys their, their, their stats, even though it's kind of difficult to, to judge it based on the fact that they are a relief pitcher. You know, so those are their stats. We'll go to the guys who got sent down to the minors by the CPU, which were Justice Sheffield, who's a 74 now. You guys can see his stats there. And there's going to be one more. Where is he? uh i'm blind where is he there should have been one more maybe not maybe they just brought up somebody oh yeah because they sent down kirilov there's kirilov for you guys he was hitting 252 on the year so you know he's up to a 74 so that's the end of that season it's getting better it's definitely getting better you know we won 74 games right yeah 74 games so it's been what 10 games every season which or no maybe uh, it's it's a big improvement so this season we're gonna guess the i'm gonna go i'm gonna go the athletics winning it all this year but you guys can see the prospect growth is really nice the cardinals defeat the indians okay all right let's get into season four see how it goes i'm kind of excited you know the team is really coming together Ooh, pete alonzo is a beast Alrighty, so 76 and 86 you know, eh, eh. I mean, I, I'm not going to complain, but, you know, I'm kind of hoping we can do a little bit better going forward. Seven games out in the wild card. When you look at our team, we're ranked sixth, um, eighth in contact, eighth in speed, second in power, 10th in pitching and 14th in defense. So we're getting we're getting up there. Urias had the most triples. And when you look at the awards, let's see what happened. Pete Alonso, just gold glover guaranteed um looking at our starting rotation you guys can see casey mize is looking like a really good starter to pick up for the future he's his stats you know his per nines are really nice and then when you look at his stats that he's done it's, it's looking pretty good mitch keller not too bad definitely not too bad um i probably oh i put the wrong i wanted hit i wanted mitch keller to be our closer um just because he's done it before and he actually did decently but as a starter this season, you know, his per nines have gone, uh, have gone up, so it's not too bad. Forrest Whitley had a little bit of a rough season this year, but when you look at his per nines, you know, some went down, which is not good to see. Michael Kopech's only going up. Um, his ERA is still going down, but, you know, when you see his per nines, they're still pretty low in terms of walks and home runs per nine. Mackenzie Gore, 84 overall. Um, his per nines are looking, you know, slow. They're slowly going up, but, you know, in the 60s, you know, they're not that great. You're looking for more of a Casey Mize where he's almost 70 in every single per nine. When we look at Dylan Cease, um, his 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 per nines are pretty low. But um, again, he didn't pitch too much this year. He was our closer. Puck is up to a 72. Um, okay, not bad for a middle relief pitcher, you know. Uh, slowly but surely, stats are going up. And that's what I want to see. I want to see stats going up. And, you know, Jesus Lozardo is one of them. Um, and then obviously all these are going to be skewed because really fitting. But when we look at the lineup, holy smoke. Some of these guys have gone up a lot. Uh, Victor Robles, you know, started in center field this year and it's looking like he probably should start from now on. He's looking like an absolute beast. 85 overall. Nick Senzel's 91. Look at his power versus lefties. You know, he's, he's looking good. 37 homers this year. Vlad's uh, almost a 90. 
crazy stats. Crazy stats. Pete Alonso is at 82. Um, so he had, he had a down year uh, again, I think, right? No, last year was his best year, but this year he went down, which which sucks. Um, but he does have some power. Eloy is at 85. You know, most homers and ribbies he's had in a season, but in terms of average, not that great. Tatis Jr. is at 87. Um, pretty comparable to the year before. We'll look at his stats again because I kind of quickly went through them. Joe Adele is an 81. So within like four seasons, he's jumped up almost 20 ratings. It's pretty good. That's 15 ratings, 15 ratings that quickly. That's pretty quick. Uh, Mejia is at 87, which is cool to see. You guys can see his stats. You know, he's slowly starting to get the bat going. And Urias is an 82. Um, one of our lower rated players as well. Joey Bart. Okay. You know, he's still competing pretty, you know, the catching spot. It's starting to get a little little bit of a gap. Hyru is a 74. Tucker's 81. Kirilov, 76. But, you know, he's been very limited in his... Oh, first three seasons, he was a starter. So this was the first year he was limited in his plate appearance. And then Royce has kind of been that backup in this season. It didn't really go too well. Um, but, man, the you know, Tatis. You got uh, Eloy, Guerrero, Senzel, Robles. Even Pete Alonso is not looking bad. You know, the team is growing very, very fast. And I'm, I'm actually really excited with the way the team's growing. We're going to do one more season. Maybe we can push for a playoff spot. You know, the team is only getting better and better. Um, looking at the playoff bracket, I'm going to go with the Diamondbacks again because I feel like they're going to do it. They didn't. The Dodgers defeated the Indians. The Diamondbacks didn't even make it out of the wild card spot. So, see, last season we're going into... Um, Obviously, the pitching's the big... Th that's that's really what's holding us back. If we had, like, a real bullpen, we'd be set. But uh, let's see how it goes. I'm kind of excited to see how this last season goes. See after five seasons how big these prospects are going to be. Let's do it. So, season five, we actually won the division. 94 and 68 will be taking on the Indians in the division series. So, a huge jump in the way the team progresses from season one to season five. You know, we won 44 games season one. Now we're winning the division in season five. So strikeouts, Michael Kopech was the leader. Let's take a look at the awards. Pete Alonso, gold, glover, guaranteed. So looking at the standings, we are first in the MLB. Third in contact, second power, second pitching, 11th defense, and 14th in speed. We won the division by four games above the Rays, and the Red Sox and Yankees are slowly starting to fall. Um, let's let's take a look. You know, something something had to work. No, no closer. That was that was the move this year. Apparently, no closer. Um, but you guys can see the team here. Casey Mize from the Tigers is is looking like a definite pickup. Like he just looks really good. Ninety three overall. Even Michael Kopech at ninety two. If you can get those walks and hits and home runs per nine up a little bit more, this card is unreal. And when you think about these, all these players are going to be still very young after five season. Mackenzie Gore, you know, at at a ninety overall. His per nines aren't that bad either, you know, almost almost 70. Um, Forrest Whitley, he's even starting to, you know, come together. And like I said, all these guys are hitting, you know, mid-20s. So you're looking at 27, 26, 25. Some are even, you know, probably still 24, you know, some of the, the um, people in the lineup. So you're looking at a very young team who in five seasons took over the division. You know, obviously a lot of crazy things happen in Sim-style franchise. But it is crazy how quickly this the these prospects developed into really good players. So I'm actually really excited to see how this team is. Holy cow. All right. So Senzel, 96 overall, almost hit 300 on the year. You know, 33 homers. Like, jeez. Kyle Tucker jumped up a lot this season. He's up to an 88. He had easily his best season. Um, hitting wise his stats don't look amazing but still really good vlad's a 95 you guys can see his stats are unreal crazy power crazy vision just stupid numbers stupid numbers eloy jimenez is up to an 87 as well you guys can see he's he's only getting better pete alonzo huge jump um he was at 83 last season so he's up to an 88 you know, I think he's one of the older players in the squad at 29, but still he looks unreal for a first baseman. Hyra, second base. Tatis Jr. is an 89, and for a shortstop, amazing fielding, decent hitting stats. You know, that's the team's 
looking crazy good. Victor Robles is there. His fielding is just no wonder why he won a gold glove. Mejia is an 88, and you know he's he's kind of settling around the, like that 250 average. Um, Joey Bart 86, not too bad. Joe Adele 84, decent hitting stats for sure. Um, let's see what else we got. Kirilov at 83. Um, not bad numbers. Definitely not bad numbers. 316. Luis Urias is 83 as well. Um, his hitting stats are still kind of low, but good fielding. And Royce Lewis, 84. Good fielding. Dec okay hitting numbers. Kind of similar to Urias though. But overall, the team looks really good. The pitching looks really good. Um, and we made the playoffs. So let's let's see how we're going to do here. We're taking on... Who do we say? We're taking on the Indians. So let's see how it goes. You know what? Let's let's quick manage it. Let's see how the team does. Let's see how the team does for sure. Let's get into it. We are the away team. We'll let Whitley take the mound. The lineup's looking the same. Let's uh, let's see how this goes. All right, they got a run. So they have Allen, Merrifield, Chris Bryant, Puig, Zimmer, Bowers, Stewart, Keyboom, and Plawecki. Okay. All right, we get out of that. Hmm. Yikes, it might, it might be a little ugly and it might be a first round exit for us here in the playoffs. So one out, we get a walk and then a double play to end it. Jeez, not the best. It is five, nothing. And I think that might be it for uh, Whitley just, just because it's, it's, it's not going well and it's only getting worse. So, uh, you know, the young team is just getting exposed here. In the playoffs, Vlad Jr. puts us on the board, but uh, you know when we're down seven-two, it's 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 looking pretty bad. Um, and the Indians have been in the playoffs, I'm pretty sure every season. So we get one back. You know we're only down four, but we're we're down to a, you know a very few amount of outs left. So okay, Justice Sheffield did pretty well once he came in. Only allowed what like two runs. Eloy puts us okay. We got no outs. Down by three. Can we do a little bit of a comeback? We can't. And that's where we're, uh, we're, that's our road right there. We get kicked out by the Indians. Uh, and I mean, the Indians, they went to the World Series, what, two of the five years, four, three of the five years we did this. And so, I mean, their, their team is just unreal. But when you look at the team, you know, every single one of these players, you're looking at, you know, 26, 27, maybe at the most. I think Pete Alonso is the oldest at 29. And so when you're looking at this team, you're looking at a team of a lot of young players who in five years, the lowest one we have is an 83, which for any team is a solid player to get. Obviously, a lot of these players are going to be very difficult to trade for if they're not already in your farm system for a franchise that you choose because they all have you know high potential. They're very good and expected to be good. But if you can somehow sneak one of these players into your team, you have a bona fide superstar in the making you know like my for the lineup obviously tatis jr vlad jr senzel looks good but even pete alonzo like those hitting stats look amazing um victor robles you know more of a contact hitter but good fielding good speed another player i like the looks of was joe adele you know good speed good fielding and decent power for a center fielder that looks awesome um there was one more who was he Hirura doesn't look bad, you know, Eloy, obviously, but like as a whole, every single one of these players, you definitely pick up. Mize is my biggest recommendation for a pitching prospect. He just looks so good. Um, and then my other one would probably be Soroka. Um, but then when, even when you look at some of these guys, Mitch Keller doesn't look bad from the Pirates. You know, there's definitely a lot of good options for prospects in this game. So I hope you guys enjoyed this rebuild. If you did, make sure you hit the like button down below. Subscribe if you're new and enjoyed the content. And as a, and as always in the comments section, let me know what you guys thought about it. Who are some of the prospects you guys always try to trade for or pick up in a franchise? And I will all and I will catch you all in the next video. Peace.